how do you get your timeline elements to be small boxes like on your screen? So if you go to the, this button over here, it's like your timeline management options. If you go to like the video track height, it will probably be like this and you can put it down like this. Oh, interesting enough. If you have the pictures here, it actually lags your playback just a little bit. If you put it down, it doesn't have to process those pictures. And so it does give you a little bit better playback if you are like, need to really crack down on this stuff. Any tips on getting better performance while doing 3D stuff in Fusion? 3D stuff, uh, I would say optimize your render. I don't know what exactly settings I, I, there was. There's a smoky tutorial telling you like putting like high quality down and like certain certain things down will help you render faster if you're looking at the viewer. Also, uh, if you have like one and two and on different different nodes, like if you're looking at different viewers, like I can't, doesn't see it now, but you know, if you're using multiple viewers and say you just collapse one viewer, but you still have that one open, it's still processing and rendering that video, even though it's not on your screen, which is really weird to me. It shouldn't be doing that, but yeah, make sure you're only, you only have one viewer active and that maybe might, might help more. Otherwise, yeah, I guess like not previewing the 3D with uh, with lights on or something like that. I don't know. Like there's this little button over here. You can switch between like lighting mode and the shadows and then no nothing. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could try testing around with that. I don't know. Maybe you're not caching your your video in order to play back smoothly. So you see this little blue line. This like this is a uh, caching. There's a video on this channel showing you how to enable cache properly, and that's when it allows the render out. Even if you ha do have cache on and it's like not doing it, take an adjustment clip, put it above your whole edit, click it, right click it, and then hit render cache color output, and that'll force render cache the whole image. And like, even if if you force render cache over on your clips down here, it'll only render cache for like this clip here, and then everything on top needs to be or is not being render cached, which is also weird so take that adjustment clip and put it on top be on the, has to be the most top layer and have that cache and then hopefully you'll get better playback and see maybe it'll play back in the proper fps if you're trying manga animation what would you what would be your method <laughs> grid warp grid warp is your friend you could do stuff like this here you have your grid warp you want to go to your source and then you want to adjust your source so let's like make this go down more like this and then we could adjust our our grid so it looks like this and then let's put this down there, just line this up like say something like this for your source. And then you want to set your source to your destination. So you just have the same graph here. Uh, I'll use selected for this and go to destination. So now wherever you move, this is where it's going to be keyframed. So we can keyframe this from here and then we can go to the end, keyframe again. And then we could move this around with either the points or move the actual points like this. And then you have something like that. And then basically using a combination of this every single time, that's basically how you're going to do it. I also, when I did it for one of my edits, I used the transform node and isolated every single se section of the person and then moved it with a transform node. That's kind of what you need to do. It's a pain in the butt. It's not easy at all. <laughs> That's why there's no tutorials on it because people don't want to like go over that. But yeah. How do uh, you create a graph effect that looks like Ryan Doris? Ryan Doris. Oh, like in the background, I'm assuming. There's the node called grid, the grid node. I think I put a preset on mine, but this you put, oh, you put a background node and then you connect that to the grid node and then you make this nine by 16 and this gives you this nice grid. And then if you want to like expand this more, put a transform on this and then put the edges to wrap and then zoom out the size more. And then you kind of have your grid there and then you can make this, the, the things bigger or whatnot. And you can also, I think, not put down the hort, the width and the size like that. So you have like that nice background stuff. And then if this is still is too bright, put a brightness of contrast on there and put the gain down. And then that should be your, your nice background grid effect. What does a bitmap do exactly? So a bitmap basically turns your image into something that can be used in the masking space. So it turns your image from RGB values into alpha values. So let's take a let's take what we got here. Let me add a bitmap. So let me, let me, like if I hover over this image, right? If you look at the bottom left hand of my screen right now, I'm pointing toward it, but you can't see it. Like you see where it says like color, it's like super small. It says color, and then the red value is this value, the green value is this one, blue is that one, and then alpha is one. If we put this into the bitmap, it turns this into alpha space. So right now, you know, everything's just one because it's white. But I turn this into like if I wanted to read the luminous channel, which means like the brightness of whatever is here, and it averages whatever is here into a black and white image and then puts the alpha to whatever that is as well and so you can be using it in like the masking space so for example if i want to like if i crank these values down up and down like this and then I take my footage here and I put it here and I put this bitmap into the mask of the media in. Then we could basically have a mask of these dark values over here are getting taken away from this image over here. So use it as a mask. It's physically making a mask for whatever this is. And most of the time, you don't even really need the bitmap. You use it for like the fast noise because there's some certain things that you need to do for that. But like if we turn this, put this into here and go to the settings and then say luminance, we can do the same thing we did on the bitmap, but on the media in. There's a, a bunch of all the generators have the same control that you can do for this, but specifically for the, um, um, the fast noise, you, you need this bitmap here and put it into the, the noise brightness map. And that's how you get your gradient map type of effect like this. So yeah, that's usually why you would see bitmaps in there if I'm doing the gradient map. How can, okay, how can I get more creative with my edits? Watch other people and 
kind of replicate what they what they do. Beetle, how do, how do you get more creative with your edits? Um, just do it. See? Okay. There's a guy named <laughs> Endless. Maybe it's it give you some inspiration. Oh, fuck Endless. Okay. We love Endless. Endless is Party. super dope. He has a bunch of uh, dope stuff. Like this is him. Like you could like take a frame and see like what he did in that in that edit, and maybe try to replicate that, and then maybe look at, see another person what they did to replicate that, and then like, maybe mash the two together. Like I, I find a lot of glitch editors good for like inspo uh, for the, for this. But endless is super dope. I, I would say watch Instagram editors for real because they they be doing some crazy stuff and they're not posting on YouTube, and it's like infuriating. Brendan has some good stuff. He does post on YouTube as well. If you want some stuff, like go to Pinterest as well. Maybe try and like see what effect they did there. Like oh like this is a cool effect. Maybe I'll try and re. Uh, replicate that and edit and maybe add some more unique style in that way but like a lot of graphic design stuff is a good way to get a lot of inspo as well like this is what they mean by like looking at like other art, art forms in order to get other ideas maybe to implement in your in your edits a good website as well is like eye candy this place has a lot of dope stuff if you need like want to try some different video stuff it just shows like these are all different effects you can look at and then say like oh i want to look at the spotlight effect and then you can see a bunch of scenes that they did with spotlight hey look it's good yeah stuff like this it will help I have a suggestion for getting more creative with edits. Like, click a random effect you never used and mess around with it and see if you can use it. I don't know if that's the best to do with nodes because sometimes, like, it doesn't fit with it. But I mean, for sure, like, there's multiple times, I think twice, I went through all every single node and just played around with it, connected it to some footage to see what it does. And then, like, I put all the nodes I think that were useful off to the side and just, like, looked at those nodes and, like, see how I could implement those into in my edits or if it was useful or something like that. This for turbulent displays. So we have basically what I showed in the tutorial here, but it's different. This is, like, like the one where how do I explain? We have a fast noise, right? Fast noise map. This one is from zero to one. This is just black and white going into a bump map CBU, shift space CBU, create bump map. That's that node uh, with the settings, the height scale all the way up, and we get this map, right? And then I have a brightness and contrast controlling contrast in between it. So right now it's full contrast, and then it's going to gray. And so when it's gray, that means it's like really not doing it, warping much. And then I put it into a displace at on X and Y, red channels on X, green channels on Y. We have both offsets at negative 0.5, and then we use the X refraction and the uh, that to the wire fraction do that and then we have this warp which is like this and this is like for some reason better than we have before we have our zoom out at the beginning as well and then i put it into the turbulence displays that i taught in the tutorial this is like a, a macro i made for it and i combined those two and that kind of has a better motion and then i there and then i combined it with a fisheye warp that basically it does like this have a motion where it pinches the edges so the edges are closer to the camera and then it and then i keep it backwards using another displace so this is just using you can see my pinch and my no you don't see the pinch it's sort of you see it, it's basically displace and then with your background you have a gradient like like this black in the middle white on the edges and you put that on the green input of the foreground and then it allows you to edit the image like this we're on x and y well we don't want x and y we actually want our, on radial and then we want the offset down and then we have the refraction strength go like this we don't even want the offset there we go like that so that kind of gives us our our fisheye warp and so i have all that going and this goes into this so optical flow you need optical flow node and then you need the vector motion blur so vector motion motion blur is basically like rsmb from after effects but it gives it that smoothness and softness that the nodes itself just doesn't have but basically it's generating motion blur based on the movement of the clip that's why you need an optical flow and then i, I mask this out so it's just uh, 1080 by 1080 and then i put another transition on it for the next transition but yeah it it's, might be super laggy as you can see are kind of struggling just to get out of the page but for some reason that just gives it the nice smoother movement hopefully it plays back and we're not stuck here i watched that vid and considered paying the guy instead for the macro <laughs> it is a bit of a pain in the ass to make but here Another thing, Texture Labs. If you want to like see a bunch of ways just to make stuff, this guy has a bunch of techniques for it's for mainly for Photoshop, but he has After Effects stuff as well. But all this stuff can be done and like translated into DaVinci. So I all the After Effects tutorials, I translated those into DaVinci. Some of them are not done very well, but like that's how I got the, like the loop tutorial. Like that's yeah okay can we move yeah this is not one of them but i thought this was cool go to the beginning uh, okay the time blend that was one from, from one of his videos and i was able to do it i think I made a tutorial on it um to happy about this animated text where it like, kind of goes in like this it's supposed to be like wavy and stuff like that where, where it does that but that's nice there's some sort of steel design texture this is all with like gradients and stuff like that no 3d this is yeah like a burn away i think this is um this might be one that he did and then i did um, the one that milo touch did yeah it's, it's okay I like, I like the char on this one better i think but i like the the way that this one moves better and like the smoke is better than this one and then some sort of thing he made there this fire is like super laggy to play back but it was like a fire text he did i did the blood this is like super bad but the technique is there ink 
basically the the loop as well. We got the CRT type of thing. And then we had the, this, this was kind of hard to figure out, but that was a, this on this recent tutorial. But yeah, all this stuff is made with Fusion. That looks insane. Yes, it is. All of it is insane. <laughs> when are you going to put them up on YouTube? I don't know when, because I'm just like copying what he did, you know? But it, like, he, he goes over step by step and I just copy what he did. And then he does that and he puts it into a grid and then I crop it to how it is. Then we put this into, we have our main image. We have it black and white. And then this goes some sort of fast noise. Oh, this is like extra blocks into a bitmap, into a gradient map, into sizing it down for some reason into a displacement map it's displacing it's using that black and white map into a mosaic and this mosaic lines up perfectly with the the grids that, that are here which goes into this node that vision made which is um, a bunch of blend modes but this one's like on a hard mix and so this is like this type of thing and then we have like frame average which is laggy that's why i disabled it but is that and i put a dream glow on top of it and then i put another gradient map to make it green like I, is there an audience for this i don't know but basically it's with this free Fuse. Oh my god. Oh, what the f is that? What is that? Oh my god. Don't clip a chat. Don't clip a chat. What the f was that? That was on YouTube, okay? That's that was crazy. <laughs> oh my god.